Major Virgil Armstrong, who served for 22 years in the Defense Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and the elite unit Green Berets during the Vietnam War, witnessed the recovery operation. I received documents which said that a UFO had landed in the middle of White Sands, New Mexico proving grounds, and that this object was inert, was under surveillance, and uh, would be kept under surveillance until they could determine uh, whether it was hostile or friendly. It later turned out that uh, it was friendly in that the occupants were dead. And uh, when we got aboard, there were five bodies. The bodies uh, were diminutive in size, in other words, 3.5 feet. The largest one was uh, just under four feet. Two of them were obviously the commanding officers uh, because two of them wore epaulets on their shoulders. Uh, later, it turns out that they were all male. When we flew them back to Wright-Patterson, of course, the examination, physical examination, and the autopsy, of course, revealed that they were indeed all male. Uh, this was the first one where we got a good look at the creatures that were aboard because in the other crash, uh, the creatures were carried away by the staff that recovered it quickly. And it was not the same team that had been established to organize this. Uh, so now they, they, there is a team established, and one of the members of this team was uh, Dr. Detley V. Bronk, who was a specialist in uh, biomedic, biomedical uh, pro programs and procedures. He was a student of the possibility of life in space. He was a leading biological researcher in a university in the East. He was one of our leading biological scientists, and the bodies were turned over to him who took them into his custody. Those creatures were described as being about three and a half feet tall. Uh, I'm sorry, four feet three inches tall was the average size. Uh, they had disproportionately large heads, large eyes in the heads, disproportionately large for the head. They had disproportionately long arms with long fingers. And they were dressed in a tight-fitting military-type uniform with a stiff collar. Uh, the, uh, the craft was about a hundred feet in diameter and it had a small circular dome in the top that was uh, 20 some feet in diameter rising set eight or ten feet above the upper surface of the flange of this hundred foot diameter disc which was a, a thin disc, purport, disc, it was relatively thin and it only came three or four feet below so there was just a small capsule in this center uh, of about uh, 18 by, uh, 20 by 18 feet in the center of a 100 foot craft. They learned to disassemble this craft by finding a lever inside of the cockpit that could be pulled and it released a pie shaped section. And other levers released other sections. So they successfully took it apart in the field and carried it away on big army trucks. We believe that more vehicles came down after that up to possibly 16 in the hands of the American government and over 33 bodies altogether. And it appears that in most cases they were taken to the nearest Atomic Energy Commission facility. And they were taken to Los Alamos, they were taken to another one in New Mexico south of there. Some parts were sent to Wright Field for analysis but we believe that the bulk of the residue was taken to Area 51, which also was under the control of the Atomic Energy Commission. As a matter of fact, all of the crash recovered vehicles always remained under the control of the AEC, headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush and later by uh, his, his successor, and I don't remember his name anymore. But they've never been out of control of AEC. And we believe that there are is an extensive research facility studying crash residue in this Site 51 area, a sub-area of that called S4. And we have interviewed scientists that work there and security guards that work in the facility that tell us quite a bit about what is going on. There is a habitat there where live aliens have been taken, where we have successfully kept them alive for as much as years at a time. Physicist Robert S. Lazar worked in the S-4 complex and witnessed these super-secret projects. They are actively and have in their possession uh, alien spacecraft and they are actively uh, undergoing analysis and flying them. They set up 
and produce their own gravitational field. Just as the Earth holds all matter down, they produce that same field, but out of phase, and it, it repels itself. The effects that can cause the way in which everything operates is, is by all intents and purposes, magic. I mean, it is so far beyond uh, our level of technology. Nevertheless, Lazar states, there are regular test flights of these crashed UFOs in the S-4 area. And one of these test flights was filmed by witnesses after Lazar learned of the dates of the testing. This fascinating film shows one of these objects maneuvering near Las Vegas, Nevada, demonstrating flight characteristics as described by Lazar and so many other UFO witnesses. Incredible? This United States government memorandum to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover confirms that until 1950, three so-called flying saucers had been recovered in New Mexico. They were described as being circular in shape, 50 feet in diameter, each one occupied by three bodies of human shape, three feet tall. And also the NATO study of 1964 mentioned UFO crashes. There was an extensive annex based upon uh, one of the UFOs had crashed in northern Germany, right near the Baltic Sea. It had crashed very near where the Russian and British zones came together. This was a disk that was uh, 30 meters across in diameter and 5 meters thick. It crashed and the British Army retrieved it with the British Engineer Battalion. And they somehow learned how to take the, the op object apart. They were able to get inside of it, and they learned somehow to break it down into pie-wedge-shaped pieces. And they hauled those pieces away on what we call low-boy trucks, and they hauled them away, and I, and I understood that uh, they were actually turned over to the Americans. This was a crash, and in the, in the object were small bodies, approximately 12 of them. They were small, gray creatures with large heads. Where is the assessment final report today? When they concluded the study in 1964, they published 15 copies. They gave it the cosmic top secret clearance classification with an additional classification of eyes only and need to know. One copy was provided to the Secretary General of NATO. One copy was in the personal possession of General Lyman Lemnitzer, who was the Supreme Allied Commander and copies were provided to most of the senior military representatives for the NATO alliance at that time. In 1983, the German federal government denied possessing any information on UFOs. Why are they lying? I think the German government knows full well what's going on. I think they're well aware of the assessment. And I know that there is a German agency at a very high level in the German Defense Agency that is involved with UFO research. Every major allied U organization and allied nation in Europe has a, an office, an agency, a high-level representative who works on UFO research. 